Hey everyone, Renek Brian here. This video is for Bleach PC. He's having some problems with a snapper, I believe it's an LT11. I could be wrong on the default details, but uh, I will post a link in the description below to his channel. Um, he don't, he's starting to know, know a little bit more about tractors, but uh, he's having a lot of electrical problems. So I got uh, two tractors here. They're both Craftsman's, but um, all tractors are pretty much a similar setup on their wiring. You got your yellow wires are, are most of the time your safety wires for your ignition switch. He has all his safeties bypassed as far as I know. But um, here is the wiring setup on this on this particular engine here. It's a it's labeled as a 19 but it's closer to a 23 horse Briggs V twin. Here is my charging wires. His engine is a Briggs but it's a, it's a really really old Briggs. Main thing you gotta worry about you got a couple wires here. One is your stator wire for your headlights. On this tractor here, I have that wired to my backlight for my oil pressure gauge. And then you got this other wire here with an inline resistor. It's a one-way resistor. That's your charging wire. In most cases, is your red wire right here. Your red wire, since he's running a push-button start, his all his wiring's been ripped out. It was in pretty rough. Sh Sorry, pretty rough condition to begin with. So all his wiring's been ripped out. But um, in most cases, you can run this red wire straight to your bat. Uh, sorry, straight to your solenoid. I've done that in the past, and it has worked. You can run this wire straight to the battery side of your solenoid. So basically, where your key on power comes from, or your switch on power comes from, put it to there. Or you can run it to your switch as well. I've done that before too. As long as this gets back to the battery somehow, your charging system should work. Because he was saying he's, his charging system's not working, and his electric PTO's working, but his charging system is not working. Which, also, it could be your stator. Your stator could be screwed. So if you do hook these up wrong, or if your uh, little one-way resistor in here is burned out, you could potentially fry your charging system if you're putting too much, too much voltage through it or too much amps through it. Um, I've heard people taking these out and just cutting these out of here. Don't do that. They're there for a reason. That's why they're on the engine side harness, not on the tractor side harness. Um, I can show you one other one other setup. Um, if you know me, I am I'm big for keeping my uh, original wiring intact. I don't like push button starts. Um, I don't like modified wiring. The wiring here is, is here for a reason. If it's in good shape, I keep it. Um, very seldomly, I will rewire a tractor. Only time I would really do it is um, if I'm building like a test stand, which I have that in the works. Or if I just need to test an engine, I will hot wire them straight to the solenoid. But me, if you're, especially if they're a grass cutting lawnmower, do not hot wire them. Do not push button them. Um, try and keep your safeties. Like I said, they're there for a reason. On this tractor right here, the seat safety works. On the GT6, seat safety works. I actually went to the trouble of hooking that one back up, uh, lengthening out the wires. So someone had cut a, a, cut a good portion of the wires out, and uh, it was it was messed up. That was that side of the harness on that one was messed up. Um, but as you guys know, that's going diesel, so it's probably going to be rewired anyways. But um, I'm going to keep be keeping some of the safeties. Here is my racer. Again, see the safeties all work on this tractor. Clutch has to be engaged, and if you get off that seat and clutch is not engaged, the engine will die. But again, it's a very similar setup. It's a four wire. Uh, it's a four wire uh, hookup right here because that controls my carb solenoid, which you do not have. It has the two lines off the stator and my kill wire. But let me see if I can find it here. Right in this block here, there is the resistor. But like I said, basically that resistor, or sorry, that red wire goes up to my key switch, which is over there. And there's two, I believe two wires going into my key switch. And then, then the one, the other wire comes back out and goes down to my solenoid. So basically the, the wire from the solenoid in normal operation is providing key on power. Or sorry, constant power to my key switch. But then when the engine's running, it's working backwards and it's charging the battery. So basically power's coming out of the engine, 
going back into my battery. On this one here, the charging system does not work, at least on that side. The headlights are working, but the charging system's not. But I don't know if you have one or two wires coming off of right here. You can also take that right there and run that straight to your headlights if you want. That's how I have it set up on the truck. Um, it's basically set up that way. It's uh, basically the wire from the engine on the light side is going straight to my, uh, like I said, to my oil pressure gauge. So you can set it up that way. Um, just direct connect if you want your headlights to work. So when your engine revs, your headlights will get brighter and brighter. Or run them off your battery, which in your case, your batteries get drained a lot, will drain your battery. But uh, that's really all I can show you. It's, it's a really simple setup. As long as that red wire, in most cases, it's a red wire. It's on tractors, and in most cases, the black is your ground. Like I said, your yellow is your starting and your starting safety wire. So your yellow wire is potentially going through your clutch and sometimes goes through your seat safety as well. On MTDs, it goes through your seat safety. And on Craftsman's, I know it goes through your clutch. There's four, there's four wires in there. Two are the, um, two are the grounds, so make sure, it gets a, make sure it's getting the ground. And then two are the uh, yellow wires, and that's your ignition. So the grounds are just going back to the seat as well, I believe. So that's that's all I can really tell you. They're they're not that hard as long as you go, like I said, as long as you got that red wire hooked up to your charging system, it you should have a working charging system. And as long as I know yours is a push button start, as long as that push button start is hooked straight up, fused of course, it should start. I don't see. I don't know really know why you're why you're having no, so many problems it's not too difficult i know i know you're don't know as much but um that's hopefully this helps out so, like i said make sure you do not cut out that resistor <coughs> and if it's gone try and get one i don't know what the uh, resistance is on it but um they are important so also your um clutch your uh i know you're saying if your clutch is working I believe you said that's running straight off your battery, so that's why that side's working. So you must have something going to ground. If you keep on popping the fuse, you have to have something going to ground. That should not be going to ground. That's obvious. Uh, that's why they. That's why they pop. So hopefully this helps you out. Um, make a video on it. It's easier if you show it in a video. Then I will comment. I do watch your videos, bud. So that's pretty much it. Um, that's my two setups on here. I don't think I have anything else I can really show you. All the all the wiring harnesses I have are MTD, but um, get around to here. Like I said, this is an MTD harness. And I don't know if that's charging or if that's uh, something else I wired in. Fusible link. Another fusible link. You can see I, I nab all my fuses on my harnesses. Instead of buying new ones, I'll nab I'll nab the old fuses out of the harness as long as they're good. So, but uh, hopefully that works out for you. This one here I can't really show much because uh, that's all that's left for the wiring. Sorry, right there. That's all that's left on this wiring. That's my uh, PTO wiring. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. Again, bleach PC. Hopefully that helps you out. And again, I run car batteries. Whenever I can run a car battery, I run a car battery. Way more reliable. Um, heck, this thing here has been sitting since Sunday. And as long as, the, as long as the stereo hasn't drained the battery, this thing here should fire right up. And the stupid, uh, stupid clutch. The reason why I gotta push down the clutch even though it's locked is the, um, the, the, the buttons are weak. So it's not a big deal. Let's try to push down the clutch. Sometimes I have to, sometimes I don't have to. But um, again, that's a that's a correct hooked up wiring harness right there. Everything works perfectly. May or may not heard the stereo dinging doing its little thing. But um, 
I know diagrams, you can get diagrams, but like I said, as long as that red wire is hooked up to your charging system, as long as your charging system is working, it should charge. So that's pretty much it. That's all I can really tell you. And uh, I guess that's it. So I'll talk to everyone later. Please keep it red neck like always. And uh, please subscribe and comment.